Okay, welcome to our third session today, the Startup Lender Session. My name is Melissa Bula McGinnis with W Marketplace, the co-host of today's event, and I am your tech lead for the session. I would like to introduce your moderator for the session, Julie Ann Hennessy from the U.S. Commercial Service. Julie, let's ask you to start your video and add you to spot. All right, fantastic. Take it away, Julie. Julie, I think you're still on mute. I'm sorry, Melissa. As many times as I practice this, I always forget the mute. <laughs> so forgive me. Good, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Julianne Hennessy, and I will serve as your moderator today for this very, very interesting uh, um, session that you're about to hear. And it's just, I'm, I'm pleased to be a part of this. Thing. All the sponsors for for inviting me. So thank you so very much. What I'd like to do is, is just give a quick overview. I am Julianne Hennessy and I'm the director of our Los Angeles West office of the commercial service. And you all met Terry Batch earlier and she and I are part of the same organization and many of the, of the other moderators who are on this program are all with the commercial service and we all work with, with companies to help them grow their sales through exporting. So uh, what I'll do is if any of you We have questions be happy to speak with you about that but for now we will why don't we get started elizabeth your organization and your mission and how do you support women in business hi everyone um hi uh it's great to speak with you all i'm elizabeth icorn i'm our director of sales at ifund women and i have um, been with ifund women for two and a half years ifund women is the go-to funding marketplace for women-owned businesses and you've heard me i spiel a little bit this morning but i'll say it again um, and we help uh, connect women to capital through our crowdfunding uh, platform as well as offer them opportunities to apply for grants and connect them to 7a business loans with our partnership with annuity um, and my job is to continue to promote what we do to women around the world because i like our incredible uh, other panelists on here nexus cook was an entrepreneur who was always looking for funding and needed help with that so that has been a big thing on what i do here at icon all right. All right. I, can we hear you? Can you hear me? I'm sorry. I'm having a little technical issue. Can you hear me? Okay. Very good. Thank you, Elizabeth. Very good. All right. Nexus, why don't you tell us about yourself and your business and how you got started? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm really happy to be here. I think there's a little bit of an echo. I'm going to try to push through. But I'm the owner of 25th and June Nail Elixir, which is a toxin-free, vegan-friendly nail polish company that I started back in 2013, which is crazy to say out loud. It's been almost 10 years. Um, and it started as a passion project of mine. I'm like a nail polish enthusiast. And my passion for it kind of brought me to a place where I wanted to explore the idea of starting my own line. And I did a bunch of research, a lot of testing, a lot of trial and error, a lot of mistakes, but it's brought me to where I am today. And I'm really excited um, to be here and just talk about the brand and talk about how iFund Women has helped support me in my future goals and my current state. Terrific nexus. Thank you. And Elizabeth, back over to you. Just a quick question for you. What is the low and high range of your programs and the average? Great question. So we start out with um, ideation stage of your business. So what does that mean? It means that you have an idea and you don't have any funding. You can still come to iFund Women and raise funds. So zero dollars. Um, and we go all the way up to people who have then gone on to raise even more funding. Um, we have one um, person who has then gone on to raise over three million dollars um, after she has gone through the different opportunities that we have had at iFund Women. 
So we have a large range. <laughs> Absolutely. We're here for a lot of people because there's different stages of your business. It's not to say one-stop shop or we are a one-stop shop because the reality is that your business is going to be ever changing and you need to know where to go, find resources. And oftentimes women don't know where to go and find the resources, or unfortunately we don't have the resources. So if you're early stage and a woman and a minority, there's not, a, there's very, very little out there for you. So I found women said, Hey, actually let's stop before we go on that whole thing. Let's actually stop that conversation and give people the opportunity to start crowdfunding with us. Well, then Elizabeth, this, I think is another perfect question for you. What does a typical client look like for your program? And what are some of the basic requirements that you, that you need to see from a company? Great question. Um, so, um, so first off, we, we want the person to be legit is what we say here at iPhone women. What does that look like for a business? It means that this is, um, for crowdfunding to work. It means that what you put out there into the world is what you also need to make sure that people are receiving. So Nexus can talk about this more with her own crowdfunding experience. But um, when you have rewards on the iFundMan platform, you are actually beholden to follow through with those rewards and making sure that people are going to receive those rewards when they have purchased them. So th that's the basic requirements. Um, if you, that's for the crowdfunding side. If you're looking for grants, the grants that I fund women have different terms and conditions. Um, so I always say you need to always read terms and conditions after when you're going in and applying for grants. And grants are the closest thing to free money that you possibly could ever have. It's fantastic to do. But here's the thing. Grants are also very competitive. So if you are a business who is just saying, hey, I want to go get grants for my business, I'm only going to rely on grants. Well, the downside of that could be, what if you don't get your the grant? Do you shut down your business? And our answer is no, you shouldn't. We really want you to diversify the way that you fundraise, which is why we offer different opportunities to fundraise through iFundWomen. Um, and then the average that you're asking about, Julianne, what did they look like? So the person who is going to fundraise or raise on iFundWomen is going to look very different. So they're going to be uh, an entrepreneur who it may be in early stages, so ideation phase, or they just came up with an idea, they have the, maybe their business license or just got registered, all the way through somebody who has, um, we have one person who has a brick and mortar, multiple brick and mortars places. So uh, the average person looks a bit different, but they are a woman who is trying to make a difference and wanting to continue to move their idea further in the world. Very good, Elizabeth. Thank you. Well, next, let's, let's ask you then, what happened to make you realize you, you were ready to search for outside financing or funding? Yeah, it took me a few years. I found out about iFund Women, I think it was like 2019 or 2018. Um, and I just did my crowdfunding this past summer. So it definitely took me a few years before I was ready to take the leap. But I think I, I got to a point in my business where I realized I was wearing every single hat and still am wearing a lot of hats and it was just not sustainable. And I was thinking about how can I expand my product lines? How can I expand my team and just get a lot more organized and get the operations under control? And to do that, you need money, you need funding, you need support in that way. So I think that was kind of the push that I needed. I felt overwhelmed as an entrepreneur, but also really excited to keep going. And I had been working with iPhone women in a lot of different ways, like coaching sessions and attending different webinars and seminars and things like that. So it was always in the back of my mind that I knew I wanted to do it. And then I just decided, I was like, all right, this is the time. And it's a lot of work, but it's, it's a great kind of work because you have to organize yourself in a way that really just helps you kind of have a high level view of your business that I feel like sometimes when you're in the weeds and you're in the everyday, you sometimes forget or overlook. Um, so I think it's just a great practice to go through, even if you aren't hundred percent ready to really take the leap and start pushing the crowdfunding out to your network. Um, but it was, it was really great for me in a lot of different ways on top of the fact of reaching my goal, which I'm still really excited and proud about. 
Nexus, how did you hear about iPhone Women? How did you, you, you said you had been working with them. How did you hear about them in the beginning? I went to, I don't even think it exists anymore, but Girl Boss, I think a lot of people are aware of Girl Boss. And there was a Girl Boss rally, I think in LA, pretty sure. Yeah, LA in like 2018 or 2019. Mm -hmm. And a member of the team came up to me after um, a networking event and like gave me her card and just gave me a rundown of what iFund Women is and what they were trying to build. And we've just stayed connected from there or from then. And I think you you answered the question so well when you realize what made you realize that you wanted to, to, to work with iPhone women for the financing funding side of things. And I think you you explained that so well. So so very good. So let me go back to Elizabeth then. And then um, Elizabeth, how important is the relationship between you and a business like 25th and June and, and Nexus? Um well, it's funny. So I was actually one of Nexus's coaches. So <laughs> when she's <laughs> so, very important. Um, so that's, that's why I was smiling when she said coaching. I was like, that would be me. Um, so it's incredibly important. Um, I find women has recognized well, and let me backtrack. Our founder, Karen Khan, actually started iFundWomen because she was trying to crowdfund and raise for a former company that she had. And she realized, even in her own network, how difficult it was to raise money. And this is a woman who had a ton of connections, had come from Google, had been head of sales with YouTube, had a ton of connections, and it was still incredibly difficult. And one of the reasons that it was incredibly difficult is because she hadn't, she didn't know how to do it. Um, and so that's why we are very big about ensuring that you have coaching alongside how do you fundraise. So on iFund Women's platform, we actually have seen a 27 times higher raise and a success rate through crowdfunding when uh, people have gone through coaching with us. So you have the support at the same time as actually raising. Um, for those of you who are going through any sort of fundraising, um, it, it is difficult. Um, I know from my own experience of being an entrepreneur, the difficulty that it can be. So ensuring that you have some support is important um, so that it's, it's vital, uh, Julianne, to answer your question. How important is it? It's vital. Very good. Very good. I love the coaching aspect of it. Very, very good. We have a very active coaching program within the commercial service as well. So very, very good. Um, now let's take a little bit different of a, of a, of a focus here. Tell us, uh, Elizabeth, from your perspective, and then I'll go over to you, Nexus, but uh, do you require a formal business plan? And if yes, okay, so if yes, what sections of the business plan do you focus on? And then like, what documentation do you see? And basically, how does this, how long does this process take to work through all mm -hmm. this with a business plan to funding? Yep. Great question. So we start with a startup canvas here at iPhone Women. That's the model that we use when you are going through a business plan. Um, we want to make uh, the business plan very tangible. We know how overwhelming it can be to start a business plan and simplicity is key. We don't all have to have the 67 page business plan that sometimes we think that you have to. Like I know that we all, I remember being sold that and I think I signed up for about uh, a, a month realizing like, I don't need all of this to just be able to actually get very clear as to what is the problem that your business is solving for. So really understanding the problem, who is your target audience, and then the solution. The more I, we can narrow it down for our customers, then the better success you'll have when it comes to crowdfunding. And so we always say that step one is actually honing your pitch before you move on into any sort of crowdfunding. And that's actually the first part of a business plan is making sure that you actually understand what your business is and what people are, the outcome is going to be. Mm -hmm. Very good, Elizabeth. So next is, uh, how about for you? Did you write a formal business plan? And if yes, what were the most difficult parts that you had to put together? And how did you overcome those difficulties? And yeah, a great I, question, what resources did you use? <laughs> I think I, I wrote a formal business plan when I first started 25th in June, so almost 10 years ago. 10 years ago. And similarly to what Elizabeth mentioned, I think I kind of was sold the idea that it had to be this grand, robust piece of information. Um, but as I've learned over the years, it's really 
what is the problem you're trying to solve? What is your goal? What is your mission and the tactics that you want to execute on? Um, so I think particularly for crowdfunding, and I think I touched on this a little bit before about the work that needs to happen before you mm -hmm. actually launch a campaign is all laid out and correct me if I'm wrong, Elizabeth, but it's the playbook, right? It's called a playbook. Yeah. So in my mind, that was kind of, um, a business plan or a baby business plan in the sense, like you really had, or I really had to hone my pitch. Like, what am I actually raising money for? What am I, what am I asking people for and why, what are my short-term short term goals, long term goals and everything mm -hmm. that goes into that. So in my mind, that's how I'm kind of looking at a business plan, very specifically in the crowdfunding space. And what I've learned is that it was a living, breathing document in this in a sense, the more people I spoke to, and the more questions that I was asked, I had to kind of tweak and iterate, and just hone more and more because people were asking me things like, oh, I hadn't really thought about that. Let me get an answer for you. And that just sharpened my why and my mission and also sharpened my ideas of how I was going to reach my goal as well. Oh, very good. Very good. And then uh, Elizabeth, how do you help businesses determine what funding they should use or they could apply for? Or they, where, where would you take that question? Yeah. Um, so we actually have a start your journey um, quiz. It's the very first thing that you do at ifunwoman.com. So start your journey, then we'll help you understand where you're at in your business and the recommended recommended funding options for your business based on either are you in ideation, are you in pre-revenue, or are you in proven demand? Um, what we have seen is that there is not a one um, and this is what I kind of already mentioned, but there's not a one size fits all funding option for every single business. And so we, we've realized that you might actually ap like apply to a grant, but then you also want to do fundraising. And then you also want to do a 7A loan, depending on what your business is. Um, so there are opportunities for you to do all of them. Um, so that's step one ifundwoman.com, go to start your journey. The next piece is we do have a weekly webinar for you to understand kind of where you're at in your journey as well. So every Wednesday, if you have even more questions, that's another place for you to honestly come and talk to me. I'll learn more about your business and help you guide you into the next space. And then finally, um, if you are interested in crowdfunding, and by the way, I want to differentiate something. I know that WeFunder was somebody who was on here earlier. Uh, WeFunder, differences between WeFunder and iFundWomen. Why are we different, even though we're still called crowdfunding? iFundWomen is a rewards-based crowdfunding platform. We are not an equity-based crowdfunding. So we are non-dilutive. What that means and what that looks like is that you are going to be offering a reward, so any sort of product or service in exchange for money. Whereas other crowdfunding is you actually get um, either a micro loan and somebody has to pay that back, or in other cases, it's equity for the company itself. That is what differentiates us between other crowdfunding platforms. Uh, I just I kept seeing that question, so I wanted to address that really quickly. Um, so sorry, I had to add that in there. But anyway, if you are learning, wanting to learn more about re, uh, rewards-based crowdfunder, you come to our crowdfunding 101 sessions. And as Max mentioned, you download our playbook. The playbook is quintessential for making sure that you are going to fundraise successfully and filling that out. And we have broken out uh, the crowdfunding into tabs so that you can fill out your network, understand how to um, uh, make sure you have rewards that are uh, cost eff effective um, and um, then ensuring that you have a really solid uh, marketing messaging as well when you're going to launch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, Elizabeth and Nexus, let me just, um, Nexus, I want to just delve into this a little bit deeper because as, a, as someone who works with companies who export, these questions come up so often, like, what do I need to know? What questions do I need to be prepared to answer? And so I would just be interested from your perspective, as you, you, you mentioned that as you, your, your, your document or your business plan, you know, in your playbook was like a living, breathing kind of a document, right? Can you 
in a general way, can you describe the types of questions that you that maybe caught you by surprise or that you hadn't prepared for and questions that you like maybe the questions that 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 stood out in your mind that were really important to have answers to to share with you know, to share with our participants today. Can you can you um, expand on that a little bit? Sure. A few things come to mind. It was less. I not necessarily not prepared for, but surprised that people were asking like me. Uh, and what, I, I don't know how to fully explain. It. I was surprised with some questions like, oh, I didn't think that a consumer or even my friend would like think this deeply about it. But first thing that comes to mind is people were really interested in the why I wanted to expand, which seems kind of like a basic question, but that is something that came up a lot. Like you're doing well in this space already. Like why would, almost like, why would you want to fix something that's not broken? So I really had to narrow down my answer as to why it was great for me creatively, great for me as a business to really pivot into a new space, which is why I wanted to raise money in the first place. I wanna expand beyond just nail polish and into a full clean beauty, um, a clean beauty brand. So I really had to not convince people, but really drive home the point as to why expansion was so important right now. Um, other questions that came up was very specifically, how was I gonna spend the money? Um, because talking yeah. about money, especially mm -hmm. as a, a woman entrepreneur can be a little touchy talking about money in general for women can be difficult, but I was surprised about how many people were asking me like specifically to the dollar, like how, where are you going to put this money and why? And that was fun to answer because it made me have to get very specific with myself. Like I can't, if I'm asking for something for people, I can't just say, oh, I'm going to use 10 grand for marketing. Like what type of marketing, how, with who, where, when, why? So questions like that came up a lot. But as I mentioned before, it helped me get really laser focused and just more and more confident every time I would send an email or a text message or pitch um, my crowdfunding campaign. So I think it's good to one, launch it before you send it out to everyone. Like make sure you kind of test it with a smaller group of people that you trust um, and value their feedback. And then from there, just be really open two questions because it's going to strengthen your business plan if you have one, your long-term goals, and just how you approach asking for money in the future, at least from my experience. Yeah, Nexus, those are very interesting. Thank you for sharing those. I wouldn't have expected those either, but I see your point about being people want to know, well, what are you going to do with this money, right? <laughs> that, I'm, yeah. that, I, that I'm giving you're you, right? asking for it. Like, what are you going to do with it? Exactly, exactly. Okay, let's just carry one more one more second here, Ram. Nexus, I just want to um, ask you, what kinds yeah. of questions did you get from your lender? or from your investor? What did you, like besides these questions about, let's say, where are you gonna spend it in terms of, let's say from my fund women, you know, where, where did you did you have specific questions that you could share in a general sense about um, there again, being helping people prepare for the questions that they could get? Could you share some of that with us as well? You're asking people who lent, who gave me money, what were their questions? Well, so, so it would just basically be questions that you got from your lender, let's say like if it was from the, the crowdsourcing or even from iPhone women for them helping you prepare specific mm -hmm. questions that you had to be, to, to be able to address. Yeah. So when I had my first coach, coaching session specifically about crowdfunding, it was all about the pitch, the why, like, what are you actually asking for and what is, what are you trying to do? And this, it probably was about four months before I actually launched and I found myself stumbling through it. Like I thought I had a pretty good idea, but when it was time to give a succinct pitch, I was long winded. I had different thoughts popping in and out. So I didn't, I wasn't as tight as I thought that I was. So, and that's the purpose of the coaching session to really narrow that down and figure out like, what is your foundation? What's your starting point? What are you trying to do? So it was a lot of questions about like, what differentiates your business? Why do you want to expand in this space? Um, have you raised money before? Yes or no. Was it successful? Why haven't you? Things like that. Um, one thing that I also really appreciate specifically about iPhone women is they do touch on like, I guess, emotional side of crowdfunding, like it is a very vulnerable thing to do to ask people for money, um, ask people to trust in your vision as an entrepreneur, like it's a vulnerable thing. It's not always something 
we openly talk about, but I'm sure other entrepreneurs on the call might, it might resonate with them. So we touch on that too, like getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. That was um, kind of like a lot of the coaching that I received in the beginning. And then one thing that also popped up, a lot of people asked me, why not go the traditional VC route? That came up a lot. Like, why don't you just pitch it to a fund and try to get XYZ money? And those questions let me know just one, how uninformed a lot of us are about the process. Like it's not as easy mm-hmm. as just pitching to some huge fund and getting $5 million. Like that's, that's just not the case. I think it's less than 1% for women and it's even lower if you're a black owned or brown owned business. So just learning like people are kind of out of touch, which is okay. Like that's why we need to talk about this more. Um, but yeah, that question came up a lot. Like why not the traditional route? And Elizabeth, you touched on it about equity and versus rewards and things like yeah. that. So, yeah. Very uh, hopefully that answered your question. I tried to. No, that it did. Thank you. I just wanted to kind of explore that a little more because I think these questions are it's like the more you can be prepared. And like, even if there's some questions you don't even expect, right? Like, that, like you said, you some of the yeah. ones that came up to you, I think it just it's just nice to share that. Or I appreciate you sharing that because I think it can help everybody. So let's just shift gears for a second. So Elizabeth, back to you. Um, With many inputs increasing in costs, small businesses are wrestling with changes in expenses and their own pricing strategies. How do you recommend a company work with their lender during challenging economic times or investors? How do you how do you recommend they work during these times? Uh, Julian, this is a great question. Um, So we actually have, we are a global platform for people who have been asking. Um, I have a client currently who is in Egypt and it has been very difficult for the import and export um, currently. So this is actually a topic that um, I've actually been discussing mm-hmm. this week. Um, I think one of the biggest things is the opportunities that are before them. So I heard earlier today and I loved, um, I believe it was Diana who was talking about the opportunities, maybe look outside of your current market and what could that look like? So oftentimes I've talked about the ideation phase and we talk often about who exactly is going to be uh, the person who you're speaking to. And then we, um, you know, within a business plan, we are very limited to say, okay, let's look in within our own network, our radius currently. And what I love about import and export, and this is what I talk about with our clients is to say, okay, if you're going to a loan or a lender, how can you then expand that market? What does that look like for you? Have you done any sort of market research outside of the people who you've already been having conversations with and selling to? Um, I think it, it's amazing to me. There are some times where we, we start, especially in a product-based business like what Nexus is doing, and we, we are um, in a particular area, for instance. So um, maybe it's a city like Los Angeles, and we think we're just selling, but we forget about there is also a global economy that we could also address. So I do think that doing more market research, speaking to a lender who can also go outside of just your the United States and help with import and exports. That's usually what I tell people. Um, and if I have any connections to that person, I will try and make those connections as best as I can. That's what I usually tell them. Very yeah. good. Very good. So let's, I, I, I think this is just so helpful. So uh, from your perspective, Nexus, what do you expect from a lender and investment investor? Can you summarize that for us? I think I expect transparency um, and also I would say case studies in the sense of like what has the success rate been in the past like what can I expect if I do everything that I need I need to do Um, I think that's really important just seeing like the portfolio that has that exists before me Um, I think it really gives you an idea of like, okay, how do I fit into this model? How do I fit in as a business? What what do I need to strengthen? Am I ready yet? If I am ready, like now, you know, how do I move forward? Um, I think that was really important for me when I was thinking about it. I did a lot of research. I like looked at every single campaign, not every, but nearly every campaign that was listed on the iPhone Women's site of just past crowdfunding campaigns 
how they did it, how they communicated out to their network. So I think having all of that existing and a resource for people to tap into before they make a decision is really helpful. And just being transparent about the difficulties that are likely to arise. Very good, very good. So I'm just gonna finish up with one question because we're getting lots of questions in the chat needless to say. <laughs> so, so Elizabeth, let's, um, let's just, um, what is your advice for the women in business on the line today for how to get ready to accept, access funding or financing? Um, so prepare and um, it really is preparation um, and understand what your expectations should be. So I, I think we have this idea of when we are first going to raise money and, um, um, or have a conversations with a loan officer or a bank or whoever we may, you know, be speaking to, we can sometimes do a few things. We psych ourselves out sometimes, or we have this idea of, I'm going to ask for $3 million and whatever I shoot for and whatever I land on, then that's great. But the reality is you actually need to go in with more preparation than that. You need to be very specific in the understanding what it is that you're asking for. So when it comes to things like rewards-based crowdfunding, what Nexus was able to do is to say, I know that I'm going to be, you know, having this amount of money. This is what I am raising for, and this is what it will be used for. When we specify and can show exactly what we will be doing and putting pen to paper with our ideas, that actually gives confidence, oftentimes more confidence to the lender and understanding you already have a roadmap to lay out. So we know that, you know, you have a plan in place to help you get there. And from a, you know, if you're in going after a loan, then that loan officer understands like, okay they're going to be able to do this, pay it back or whatever, if that is the type of financing you're getting. So that's preparation. Understanding also your goals, like I said, which was how much do you really need? We all would love that $3 million I mentioned. That would be great, mm -hmm. but let's be really specific. The thing we often say here at iPhone Women is there's no such thing as magical money elves. As much as we would love that, there just isn't. <laughs> That's not true. So we need to actually recognize what is something that we need now that we can actually make sure that we can get to through either crowdfunding or that will help our business grow. Because what I want everyone on the line to realize is that fundraising is not a one and done thing. Fundraising mm -hmm. happens throughout the entire time that you are running your business until you get to a place of continuing to generate large sums of revenue and making sure that is uh, that dial is turned. So please ensure that you know that and set up those expectations for yourself. Very good. Very good. And, and Nexus, what advice do you have for the other women on the line today, women in business on the line today, for how to get ready to access funding or financing? I would say definitely dream as big as possible and then narrow down the how. Like don't limit yourself in what you envision for your business. But what helped me was just getting very, like breaking it down into three very specific buckets and then kind of working within that. I think the more tactical you can get, Elizabeth, you mentioned it as well, like having a plan in place and giving yourself a roadmap to whatever your goal is, I think just makes every, the entire process more digestible and makes you just sharper as an entrepreneur. Um, and also I... I don't like using words like realistic, but I'll use it in the sense like get realistic about what you want to actually accomplish in a specific amount of time. Like things just take time. Like there we're going to be blocks no matter what the goal is, things that are out of your control. So once you kind of just, what I did was I wrote out all the possible vari variables that would slow me down and then tried to have a plan in place. Just Even if they never happen, just at least I thought about it and I can pivot if I need to. I think that's really helpful. Um, and also make sure that you're asking for support, whether it's for a formal support, like you have an actual team or just your network around you, your family, your friends, and bounce ideas off of them because they're kind of like your core brain trust in a lot of ways. Um, and then also like find out how much things cost beforehand. I think that's also yeah, really, really, really important. Mm -hmm. 
have the numbers before you even start calculating what your financial goal is, if you're going to go the crowdfunding route or what your loan amount will be, because you might find that you actually need more. You might find that you actually might need less. So do the, run the numbers and figure out what that number is for you. And if you can push it, push it. If not, then that's okay too. Very good. Very good, Nexus. And I do have a question here to ask you what's next for your business. And I know you said, you said to expand into a, obviously a natural, a natural beauty line. And anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm going to expand into the gel space, which so many people have been asking me for. So I'm like, okay, I was hesitant because it's not always toxin free and vegan friendly. And that's just very important to me and important to my brand. But I finally got to a place where that can happen. So I'll be launching gels next year. Also different body butters, body oils and things like that. I'm very excited. I'm trying to like contain it, but it's a great, it's just going to be really creative and really fun and giving people and my customers, what they've been asking for, for a few years now. So I'm very, very excited about that. Well, I'm excited too. I'm going to watch your website. (laughs) Very good. Well, let's move into Q&A. We have a little time here, but you've got, we've got about eight questions to, to take a look at here. So let me just start off by, by saying this is from Annie Irizarry. Uh, Elizabeth, would I fund women be able to point us in the right direction on grants and funding options past ideation and now now at model phase on sustainable real estate community development with unique live work model what's the best way to connect with you to discuss further um, Sorry, I, I that question again if that didn't come through well nope, on my I got it okay. it's, um, yeah best thing to do is um, I'm going to put the link in the chat, but uh, just to check out our grant pages, uh, look at past grants, um, upcoming grants, opportunities. Uh, that's going to be the my recommendation. Check that out. Very good. Very good. And I think we've, I think this loan, or excuse me, I think this question has been answered in the chat, but just to make sure what is a 7A loan? I believe that that's been answered in the chat. Okay, very good. All right. So then here's another one for you, um, Elizabeth. Does iFund charge a fee for their services? Um, yep. So great question. So for coaching, we do have a monthly uh, fee. I'll put in the coaching um, link below. If you are interested in our crowdfunding, we take 5%, which is an uh, for any of the funds that are raised on our platform. Uh, But it is free to start a crowdfunding campaign. So you can start it, you can build it, but it's up until when you actually are starting to get funds, we take um, out funds, we take 5% of the funds that are raised. Very good. Very good. Yeah, and Nexus, oh, I'm sorry. Nexus, did you have something to add there? No. No, okay. Um, Nexus, I think this is a question for you. How much did you raise and what's the largest amount raised on the platform? Well, I raised 25,000. I don't know the largest amount. I've seen some pretty high numbers though, like in the six figures, but Elizabeth, I'll let you answer that. Yep, it's over $300,000 that has been raised. Um, from somebody through our awards based crowdfunding. Very good, very good. And Nexus, what reward and service did you offer? Or Elizabeth, what are examples of rewards and services a company can offer? So maybe the two of you can address that. Mm -hmm. So I tiered it, which I think is the best approach um, because the goal is to make it as accessible to as many people as possible. So I had some rewards that were like $25 all the way up to 2,500. Um, And I just offer things that I know that my community and my customers really like. So I had things like you can have um, a custom nail session with a celebrity nail artist, or I had a reward where you were able to join me during my next fashion week because I do a lot of fashion week shows where we sponsor the nails. And I know that's just a really exciting thing for people, um, like an all access pass for that. I had a custom playlist that was curated to kind of fit the vibe of 25th and June. So that was like a lower tier reward that I offered. I also offered um, access to the new collection once it launches. So you're kind of like buying into and um, into the reward, but you're going to get all, all the new products when they arrive. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. I would suggest you make it as 
um, rewarding for lack of a better word for your customers. Um, and maybe less, like less about you as a business and more about what do people actually want? Like, how am I giving them value in exchange for contributing to the campaign? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Elizabeth, anything you want to add there? No, I no, love okay. that. Um, okay. Nexus, yeah. Nexus actually did an incredible LinkedIn article um, about her crowdfunding campaign. Um, so I want to make sure that Nexus, if you want to drop that for everyone too, she has incredible tips um, for everyone and what she's learned. Yep, I'll drop it in the, the, the chat once again. Very good, very good. So just a few more questions here. So I'm working on, my, on getting my second patent out to the market and considered crowdfunding, but I'm concerned that when Asia gets wind of my design, they will hit the market before me. I have my patent and trademark, but I, but I don't want to use all my resources defending my intellectual property. Any ideas? So I think this comes up on a weekly basis for me, um, this kind of question. And, um, and it's really interesting. I oftentimes will look at my, my tape, like my desk, and I'm somebody who has lots of water bottles next to me, and I have a lot of pens. And I started realizing at the end of the day, all of my pens are a different company. They all seem to write, they all are doing something. So here's the reality. When you are raising money and it is crowdfunding, yes, it is out into the world. And at the same time, what is more important to you? Like raising the funds or like holding on to it internally? Because the more that you hold on to it, the less you're actually getting to raise money to make sure that it's really going to market. And you have to realize like there are tons of other companies that are water bottles, that are uh, pens that are all different, uh, but they're doing a similar thing. So I do want to make sure that you realize I don't want you to um, put that fear that people are going to take it and run with it because the reality is they might and I don't want that to stop you from really living in to what it is that you're doing. Very good. Nexus, any comments from you on that? Yeah, I, that kind of, as you were talking what popped into my mind is no one can really do what you do the way that you do it. <laughs> I think about that with just my own creative ideas. Um, sure, someone can take it, but the execution is gonna look different. Um, so just don't let that stop you from putting things out into the world. And that's something mm -hmm. I have definitely struggled with in the past, like holding so tight onto things and then you do nothing. So at least mm -hmm. put it out there and just remember that no one can do what you do like you do. I think we should put that in quotes, Nexus. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So Elizabeth, this is a question for you. Are the raised funds rewards and are the rewards grants? And they're just trying to get clarity. So are the raised funds rewards and are the rewards grants? Okay, so grants are separate um, at iFundWomen. So iFundWomen.com forward slash grants. Um, and are the raised funds rewards? Um, no, the raised funds you get to choose, like keep, and you are t you are giving people rewards in exchange for that, um, the money that they're giving you. So for those of you who, I, I don't know if this was covered in the earlier session. Um, I see Susan in here, so I don't know if she covered it when she was talking about her WeFunder campaign, but um, um when you are giving, when you're going into crowdfunding, you have to do some sort of an exchange of goods and services, or uh, so that if it's an equity-based company, you're giving them something within your business, or people are paying it back, that money back to you. Um, rewards mean that you're actually going to be receiving a reward in the mail or some sort of a service, maybe a downloadable or an email. Hopefully that answered that question. I know that was a bit of a history lesson, but I talk about this so much that sometimes I just, for anybody who's in the audience, education is power. Yeah. So might as well just give it to you all. That's right. That's right. Very cool. I think this is a perfect question to, to end because we're our time is almost up here. But Nexus, a question came in. Is it how can how can we support you further in your business? Oh, I love that question. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Yeah. So my website is 25thandjune.com. And the way it looks now, it's not going to look in, a, in next year, which is going to be exciting. So there's going to be new changes, um, but it's 25thandjune.com. And you can also find us on Instagram at, at 25th and June. Very good. Well, I look forward to keeping keeping an eye on what you're doing as well, Nexus. So, so congratulations and just great job. And Elizabeth, it's just been a pleasure a, a pleasure listening to you as well. And I've learned a great deal as well um, listening to both of you. So, and I'll, I'll, I'd like to take that forward to working with with some of my companies who are are growing their businesses as well. So, thank you so much. And I see Melissa is online with us now. So, I think that means that we're pretty much done. <laughs> so. 1259. There we are, Melissa. Thank you both. That was just terrific. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Julianne. So, Melissa, over to you. Thanks, Susan. Melissa, you're muted still. Thank you. <laughs> of course, right? Um, everyone, thank you. Thank you to all of our speakers. for That was a really great breakout session. All three of you were awesome. You hit on core details, things to think about and expect. And I'm sure all the attendees online could feel how very real and how very personal this journey can be. So um, we'd love to have, and also Nexus, we'd love to have you join the W Marketplace as well. So thank you all for that session. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording.